This video is about different medications and supplements for thyroid hormone replacement or hypothyroidism. I'm making this video because I think there's a lot of confusion over this topic. There's no shortage of websites or internet forums where people are saying what they think is best, but I wanted to go over this from a naturopathic doctor's perspective. This slide is to show the way that some supplement can work on improving hypothyroidism. One would be through helping stimulate the thyroid to make thyroid hormone. Normally, the hypothalamus and the base of the brain releases thyroid stimulating hormone, and that helps the thyroid make more thyroid hormone. Some supplements might actually help the brain make more TSH, and that would be one way of stimulating the thyroid to make more hormone. Another way would be to actually take substrates that the thyroid needs to produce thyroid hormone, such as iodine or selenium. The third way is to work on improving conversion, because most thyroid hormone is made in the form of T4 or thyroxine, but that's not very active. Outside of the thyroid, it has to be converted into the active T3. And then the fourth way of working on this would be to bypass the thyroid altogether and to simply replace thyroid hormone. This is primarily done with medication. And I don't want people to think in terms of what's the best way to work. I want them to think in terms of finding what's the best thing for them. What does their body need? After all, if there's a problem with your thyroid, so it's unable to make thyroid hormone, then increasing stimulation isn't going to do anything because no matter how much you stimulate the thyroid, it's not going to make more hormone. Likewise, if your thyroid can't make hormone because of a nutritional deficiency, it should make more sense to correct the nutritional deficiency rather than to start taking a medication to override the process altogether. So you have to find out where the blocks are in your particular case. I'm going to quickly go over some labels of thyroid supplements out there because we see a lot of these things. Some of them are sold over the counter. Some of those you might get from a natural healthcare practitioner such as this one. But a lot of times we just see a lot of different ingredients thrown together such as this will have 100 micrograms of iodine, which is great if you need more iodine to make thyroid hormone. Selenium is going to be in all these things because it's needed for thyroid hormone production and conversion. And then we see herbs. A lot of times there'll be some adaptogenic herbs, like this one has American ginseng. Usually these are more known as adrenal adaptogens because they help the adrenals or stress response function better. And then the other herb that we see a lot is for scoline or um, coleus. And this is actually an Ayurvedic herb, but it's known to help stimulate the thyroid to actually produce more thyroid hormone. It can kind of act like TSH. This is one from another professional company, and we see the similar idea, iodine and selenium, of course. Tyrosine is in a lot of these products. That's because it's an amino acid. That's one of the building blocks of thyroid hormone along with iodine. We don't really have studies showing that if you would supplement with tyrosine that you're going to make more thyroid hormone. Tyrosine and amino acid, that's in protein. So unless you're protein deficient, you're probably not tyrosine deficient. So I don't know if taking more tyrosine is actually going to make more thyroid hormone. Some are herbs, um, some adrenal ones like basil, ashwagandha, adrenal adaptogens, but we see the same, acolius for scoli. Um, to stimulate the thyroid, and then of course uh, kelp as a natural source of iodine. This one has two different sources of iodine. One of the criticisms I can have of these products is they're not very specific. There are some ingredients to help stimulate the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. There's some other ingredients for production, but it seems that the companies just kind of throw a bunch of stuff together for the thyroid in general. And of course, if your thyroid is incapable of making thyroid hormone at this point, then it doesn't matter how many of these supplements you're going to take, it's not really going to make a difference. That's why it's important to understand why you don't feel good when you have hypothyroidism and the different patterns of hypothyroidism, which I just covered in another video. This is another thyroid product from Biotics, which is a professional line of supplements. And this actually has something called this brain glandular ingredients. It has this lamp, pituitary, hypothalamus, extract. And what you see in these is ingredients that help specifically stimulate the um, brain, the pituitary and the hypothalamus to make more TSH. 
That's because after various stresses can interfere in thyroid hormone production, we actually need to support the brain. It doesn't necessarily have to be through this mechanism. I am happy to use vegetarian products whenever possible, but I'm just showing people different ingredients in thyroid products and why they are there. And yet there are cases where this definitely does work to help stimulate thyroid hormone production. This is from the same company, Biotics. They have another one, Metastem, and this is specific for thyroid hormone production. So this is not for the low TSH pattern. This is more for the thyroid is having trouble producing hormone, and we're looking for nutrition to help it along. And then we have a third type of thyroid hormone supplement, which are these glandulars. And with one exception that I'm going to get to shortly, if you buy any type of thyroid hormone glandular as a nutritional supplement, it has its thyroid hormone removed. So these cannot be used to replace thyroid hormone. So we see a lot of just plain glandular extracts. They might give some nutritional support to the thyroid, but that is, for the most part, going to be it. You're not taking in thyroid hormone. Um, thyrotropin PMG or thyrotropin proteomorphogen from Standard Process is a popular one amongst many um, natural healthcare practitioners. According to the seminars or lectures that Standard Process gives those practitioners, thyrotropin PMG is here to get the immune system to go after something else other than the thyroid, so it therefore would help to lower inflammation on the thyroid. But again, this is not to replace thyroid hormone at all. The one thyroid glandular that would be an exception is GTA from Biotics. And this is what was explained to me through lecture, not through online information or research. And that is, according to FDA regulations, when a company sells a thyroid glandular, it cannot have any T4 in it. There is no regulation surrounding T3. And what GTA is, is... The, it's one company's way of putting out a thyroid glandular that has the natural T4 removed, but is retaining some of the natural T3. So if I'm working with a client, and for whatever reason, they don't have a thyroid hormone prescription and they need it, or they do have one and it's not working for them, and their endocrinologist or medical doctor doesn't want to change it to something else, this is the one nutritional supplement I can give that actually can help them with having more thyroid hormone. And this brings us to the chart of the different thyroid hormone medications, the supplements, and what they have, and how are they different. The top two are the ones that are most commonly used, levothyroxine and Synthroid. So levothyroxine is the generic version of Synthroid. They're both synthetic T4. In theory, they should be identical, except one is generic. In practice, for some people, one works and the other doesn't work. Cytomel is a synthetic T3. The problem with Cytomel is it works very, very quickly, so it's hard to dose properly. So it does work if someone does need that extra T3, but they have to keep on taking it throughout the day in small amounts. It's very hard to dose. Then we have the Armor and the Nature Throid. These are the two prescription glandular products. So these are both pig thyroid hormone. And in theory, they should be the same. In practice, they may not be the same. One theory is that Armor Thyroid is not completely gluten-free, whereas Nature Throid is. But both of these are um, based glandulars with the um, natural T4 and T3 in them. For some people, they might start off with a levothyroxine or synthroid. That doesn't work for them, and they find out that they're much better taking armor or nature throid. What I would say is there are no hard and set rules. Some people who don't respond to medication need to change their prescription from one of these to another. So typically, you'd see someone on the levothyroxine or synthroid, and they really need to get onto armor or nature throid. But it's also very common, and I've seen many people comment in this situation where they really don't need thyroid hormone medication at all. If you look at their labs, they don't have a high TSH pattern, or something is very minor, it's not that far off, 
and they don't feel right when they take the thyroid hormone replacement because they really don't need it. Some of them might need to work on the hypothalamus and pituitary. Some of them might need to work on helping the thyroid make more thyroid hormone. Some of them may need to work on conversion. A lot of times they have other things going on, which is why the thyroid maybe is a little low where it's not converting properly. Every once in a while you have someone who has a completely different problem and they're just blaming it on hypothyroidism because they read a lot online about how hypothyroidism is underdiagnosed and you can't trust the labs. It's true that the thyroid hormone labs are not perfect, but if what you have does not look like hypothyroidism and your labs do not say you have hypothyroidism, you're probably not hypothyroid. And this is especially common in men who believe they are hypothyroid. Uh, most hypothyroidism affects women, and that has to do with estrogen. It also has to do with iodine need, that women need more iodine. Um, so when a man comes to me and says, I'm hypothyroid, my first response is, let's look at the labs, let's look at what's going on, see if there's something else happening. Now, a man can become hypothyroid, it's just much less common. But the truth of the matter, whether you're a man or a woman and you're tired, maybe you feel depressed, you might have body aches and pains, you are looking for a diagnosis. And I know what happens is you come across the internet forums saying it's all hypothyroidism, which isn't properly diagnosed. If you really don't have hypothyroidism and you find a medical doctor who's just willing to give you these prescriptions when you don't need it, you're not going to feel better on it. You're probably going to feel worse. Sometimes I've had um, clients come to me where they're taking like these baby doses of Synthroid or Levothyroxine, like 25 micrograms, 50 micrograms, and they're taking it for uh, months or years. And you look at the labs, the original labs didn't justify hypothyroidism at all. And they're going around with these suppressed TSHs. So the only thing that they're doing by taking this thyroid hormone is they're suppressing their TSH. So their thyroid is making less thyroid hormone on their own and they're just supplementing it. But they still don't feel good because the true underlying issues have not been resolved. There are many reasons why someone might feel tired or depressed. Hypothyroidism is just one of them. Don't get um, convinced that you have a hypothyroidism diagnosis if you don't have it. You should see something on the labs, and you should have classical hypothyroidism symptoms. If you don't have those, please don't play around with these. GTA and thyrotropin PMG, these are the natural ones. There are several reasons why I might give someone GTA um, here in New York. One might be that they need a thyroid hormone prescription, and they can't get one from a medical doctor. Again, legally speaking, this is a supplement. It's not a prescription, but it has a T3. There are some people where they just don't want to see a medical doctor because you know they don't like the way that they're treated. They don't want to bother seeing one. Uh, for whatever reason, they don't want to go into the medical doctor, but they're happy to see a natural health care practitioner. In these situations, yeah, I'll give them GT as a supplement. Another situation is Someone is on the levothyroxine or Synthroid prescription and it's not working for them. They went to their medical doctor, said, this is not working. I think I need another form. And their medical doctor is like, oh, sorry, I'm not changing the form. Maybe you just need to exercise more, something like that. In these situations where due to insurance or whatever, they can't find a, a medical doctor to go to to prescribe them the different form of thyroid hormone, yeah, I can give them GTA as a supplement. My preference would always be that someone simply takes one of what they need. If someone comes to me on any of these prescriptions and it's working for them, then I'm not going to tell them to change. That doesn't make any sense. As far as which one of these you can get from a naturopathic doctor, that completely depends upon what state you live in. It's not simply being in a state where naturopathic doctors are licensed, they have to also have prescriptive rights. So, for example, in Arizona or Vermont, naturopathic doctors are licensed and, and have prescriptive rights. So you can get these from a naturopathic doctor, which is nice because then you can go into just one person and they can order your labs, give you your prescription, and also work on things from a natural perspective. In an unlicensed state where I am, such as in New York, 
I can't order the lab work and I can't give thyroid hormone prescriptions. So what I have is clients who will go to their medical doctors for their labs or prescription, and then they come to me to work on things from the, the natural perspective. Even if it's someone who I'm using GTA with, I still can't order the labs. So in that case, they have to go back to the medical doctor or they have to pay a bunch of money to get it done out of pocket. There are some states such as Connecticut where naturopathic doctors are licensed, but they do not have prescriptive rights. So if you're in Connecticut, yeah, your naturopathic doctor might be covered by insurance and will be able to run the lab work for you, but they cannot prescribe Synthroid or Naturethroid for you in Connecticut. To be honest, most of the time when someone comes to me with hypothyroidism and they don't feel good, I'm not looking to see what other form of thyroid hormone replacement do they need. I'm looking to figure out why they don't feel good. Why is the medication not working? Um, one would simply be um, poor conversion of T4 or the less active to the more active T3. Um, some common issues that can interfere with this conversion is adrenal hormones and cortisol. If that's very much elevated, then you might see some inhibition of conversion. Much of the conversion happens in the liver. So with toxicity, stress on the liver, that can also be a factor. And finally, excess estrogen should also be considered. Uh, what happens is all these hormones have binding hormones to them. So we have sex binding hormone globulin. We have thyroid hormone binding globulin. So one of the ideas is that if estrogen is increased, we have more binding globulin so we, to bind more estrogen, but that's also binding more thyroid hormone. Regardless, if, if there's this estrogen dominant pattern, it's something I'm going to look at. And usually that's tied to poor liver function and toxicity. And amazingly, sometimes when the thyroid hormone prescription doesn't work that well, if you step away from experimenting with different forms and doses of thyroid hormone and just work on improving health, then the thyroid hormones might seem to work a lot better. So to recap, if you can't make enough thyroid hormone, we need to do a holistic assessment to find out why that is. Do you need to have more stimulation on the thyroid? Does it need more nutrients for production? Do you need to work on conversion? Are there other factors? If you have Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroiditis, it is possible over the long term to bring the antibodies down and to recover from that. But in the short term, you're going to need to take thyroid hormone because your body isn't making it on its own. Thanks for watching. The video I'm linking to is about patterns of hypothyroidism, which is a very important to know to figure out why you might have hypothyroidism specifically and what you should do about it instead of just the same old general information.